Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Olivier. I am the, uh, currently the documentation coordinator for TDF. And um, the idea I have here is to uh, present to you the issues that we have in documentation and also get from you some feedback about what, where, where should we go in terms of documentation. Yeah? Everybody knows what is this uh, small application that we have in the cell phone? Do you know? Do you know that we can control the, the, the presentation with the, um, the cell phone? Yeah? But there is no help page for that. If you look into the, um, in the, the help, you won't see any reference to impress remote. So this is one of the issues that we have. We have very nice features nobody knows about because there is no help. So this is one of the situations I have and I want to discuss with you because um, this is not something that requires rocket science to do. Okay, so it's a very low barrier entry for contributing to the project. And this is an, a nice feature that we have in this sense. Okay? Well, uh, our, our documentation problem has three parts, three dimensions. Uh, when I started looking to the documentation more deeply, I found that uh, you have a literature that is written by a group of authors. We have the issue on the help content that goes on with the, with the software that you download, download, and also you have a copy of the help content in a in wiki page in a specific, specific uh, uh, address, helplibreoffice.org. Okay, this wiki is a copy of the help contents. Okay. The third part is the community services. What TDF is doing to help users with uh, the application. Okay. Well, um, please feel free to raise your hand and open for discussion. I am just using a presentation to give ideas and to address the issues that we have, okay? Very well. Let's talk in, then about the books. We have a set of books that were written in, in, the, in the time of open office and were transported, brought to LibreOffice. Uh, this project was driven by Jean, Jean Weber, an Australian lady that is that was a professional technical writer, and she brought to us all her experience on writing technical books. So she's extremely skilled for that, and this is, uh, let's say, quoting her baby, okay? It's a very interesting uh, activity that she did for us. And uh, what we have at the moment is a getting started book, that we are almost ready to upgrade to the latest release of LibreOffice 5.2. We just finished 5.1. And the, the amount of work to update to 5.2 is very small, very small. Uh, we have the writer guide that is in release four. Jean uh, today is um, working to upgrade it to five. And we have the calc guide that is also late in release four. And then we have the other guides that are even more um, lagging in terms of, uh, of time. Uh, the getting started guide, like I, like, like I said, it's, it's very easy. The other ones need a better understanding of the application. So you, if you want to write and update these books, then you have to really understand the application, understand the module, for example, the spreadsheet, and be able to really add value to the content of the book. 
not only by updating with the new developments done by the, by the software, but also maybe bringing to the book your experience on being a consultant or being a, a, thanks, a professional user of the application. Okay, if you work in, in accounting companies and you want to write about spreadsheet, then your experience may be interesting for us, okay, and for the community. Very well. Questions? Questions? Yes, go. <laughs> yeah, then you have Super Biloche, who has an extra, uh, all the procedures to use a computer aided translator tool, Omega T, that makes it extremely fast to translate. Okay, Miloche may want to speak about that. Uh, you have done all the procedures you have explained. I have used your procedure for the Brazilians. We are at the moment uh, only finishing the revision of the translation. And I can tell you, once we finish 5.0, which is all released at the moment, and we go to 5.2, it will be in a snapshot to update the translation. So this, this, prob uh, this issue is we have a solution. Milos uh, knows it. Okay. Okay. Can, can you tell something about it? Well, well, you can read about the procedure in my talk from there. There is a video. Uh, uh, what should be done? Uh, uh, we decided to use Omega E. It's a computer-aided translation system. It remembers the, and offers already translated text. And uh, so. Such a book contains maybe 25% of reading the text. It's, you know, but uh, it, well, it should be translated well. And uh, then the next uh, uh, version is translating just the differences. So it helps a lot. Then we did another thing. We started to collaborate with another language community, the Santa. Or actually sitting here, Czechs and Slovaks, we, we have very similar languages. And we translated not from English to Slovak and English to Czech, but uh, we use Google Translate between these two languages. And in our case, it gives 90% uh, good text. So it increased, improved the speed. And yes, yeah. so this workshop also helps you to know who is really skilled and could uh, give us give you a good uh, start. Uh, I would also say that um, if you know what is Poodle, uh Omega T will will uh, is also a computer aided translator with memory. So the fact that you have an uh, an updated uh, sentence, it will offer you several possibility of translation. Then, oh, oh, in, in summary, it, it will speed up uh, very well the, the work of translation. Okay. Uh, so this is the, the the situation of the books, and uh, like I said, it needs uh, dedication for someone that is knowledgeable in the con the context to really write a good text. And also, what is important is that those set of book, this set of books is also used as a reference for other communities. Like, people like to, to get these books as the, as the official TDF books and then start translated into their, their language. Also, these books are interesting to be source of 
an independent literature about LibreOffice. Okay, so since we have a, a Creative Commons license, you may use the contents to produce another content of your authorship. Okay, so this is another contribution that we have from TDF for the community. Okay, well, books are important. Like I said, it's used it as reference for other books. It's a reference for the translators. And also, uh, uh, it's appointed, like appointed by TDF and considered an unofficial documentation for LibreOffice. And what is it's important? Because, you know, you can just download the software. But then you will, if you want to invest into the software of your personal time, you will hit uh, very soon then it's the need of finding documentation to find experience on the software written by other people to increase your knowledge of the software and this cannot be done exactly um, it's not very effective to for trial and error sometimes you want to shortcut and guts and go directly to the uh, contents that helps you in doing your task very well. So, what is the workflow for updating the books? It's not difficult. Uh, you, we first have to go to the ODF author website. It's a website that is hosted inside TDF infrastructure. It's a prone site and it's used to store our books. Then, if you, you ask us the permission to uh, for an account, and then when you go there, you pick a doc, uh, one of the chapters that is already published, and you download the source, which is an ODT file, or is, that is, it's, it's, a, it's a writer file, and you just look, read at it, and you, you will see if you need to improve the contents or not. Okay? Sometimes you just don't need to, to touch anything. For example, between one release and another, the set of uh, the chapter that talks about ODF is not going to change, almost nothing. So it's a very easy task to just update the, the, the file and to put into this workflow. Okay, so you pick the, the, the number, the chapter of the previous release, you send to the documentation list that you will uh, update the chapter so nobody does uh, duplicated work. And then you enable the track changes. This is important because you, you will help the, the person that we revise to go directly into your changes, okay? And then you do your tweaks, you do your uh, updates. You have to respect the styling guide. I mean, you use the right styles for headings, paragraphs, um, captions, and uh, notes, tips that you, we have in the book. This is, the book is totally structured into styles. It has the best practice in terms of uh, using styles in the text, okay? So please respect this, uh, don't use direct format, direct formatting, because this is going to have an impact in the Omega T tool, uh, or the translation tool, so better use uh, styles, okay? And then you have to update the graphics the, and the screenshots, if the, scre the, the screenshots has uh, some changes. Okay, and then you upload your file into the draft folder that someone else is going to pick your file and do the revision uh, and prepare for publication. So that's, that's it, basically a, quite a simple workflow that allows us to really push the release uh, faster. It, uh, to avoid the situation that you have raised, that is, uh, we are in release 5 and I have a book that is in release 4 because that gap takes time to fill. So 
if we can keep the de development of the software close to the documentation, this gap is slow and make us more effective. Okay, questions? Questions? Yes? The base handbook, um, the base guide. On the, on the wiki, yes. Ah, that's good. Uh, good question. I was uh, have discussed it with uh, with Jean Weber, and she said to me that we are late in the base guide. Uh, and uh, she told me that uh, it seems that there is a German book that is much more complete. complete. Uh, and she, she asked if it can be translated to English. So in that case, the localized uh, book uh, to be translated in English would be a nice thing that we can do. Yes. So the issue is not only translation, but also redesign with the styling, the correct styling. Is that right? The styling is good, but it's not complex for Omega T. Okay. I can't understand this problem. You have Omega T, which is surely capable to ignore some styles. If I understand you right, it must be the right style, so Omega T will ignore that. It's not that. Uh, it just sees the tags in the text yeah. and uh, uh, replaces the real text with some shortcuts. But these shortcuts are displayed. Yeah. And uh, if there are too many of them, so the text is destroyed. Yes, because you have too much. It's like very perfect. Uh, yes. Whoever has translated the help, see when you have several tags in the middle of the text, it starts to be very cumbersome to translate. So, with the normal guys, I clean the text. So the normal text is without any styling, so it means default. And only those bold things are some style. And in the handbook, uh, uh, I think this could be done by the community. This is the only uh, issue you have with this book. I think this could be done. It's just to be communicated. I can, I can even work on that. Just I didn't want to somehow get okay, involved. But if there, there is some from demand from the community and the authors agree and everything else, so I'm even prepared to work on that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I think this, this is more an issue of communication. Yeah. At last. Uh, because I think if you, if you could talk about the people's own, I think it should be done. Uh, 
Memory. If you if you have if you have the the original and the translation, uh, there is a tool, a script that can build the translation memory. So, yeah. Yes. You say there is a script, where can we find that? Because in, in Dutch we do have quite a lot of uh, translated uh, chapters. Yes, so the, I job. think that the, the, the script for alignment is, is done by Milos, no? No, no. Oh. It's, uh, it's a Hungarian project, I, I think it's called Aligner. Aligner, yes. And, yeah, and Milos also wrote a page on the wiki with uh, almost the same contents of your presentation with the details on how to build a group of translators using Omega T. Sophie, okay. Yeah, I translated your page in Brazilian Portuguese and we used it, the, the information for, for this purpose. Uh, I give you, Leon, uh, the, the links, okay. So, so the, basically we take a chapter of the previous uh, uh, release, we update it by reading carefully and uh, see if there is anything that is new. We update the text and then we submit for revision, okay? Not forgetting to enable the track changes because the track changes really will give you a visual indication of the modifications, okay? Very well. Uh, some hit, hints uh, uh, and tips of the books, uh, I have perhaps already said that. The Getting Started is an introductory text, so there is no need to go into very deep details, okay? It's a book for newbies, people that are just starting in LibreOffice, so that function that calculates the ledger of one, uh, one investment is not the, the right contents for an introductory book, okay? Uh, if we need more attention, then we go to the guides of each application. Then there we can specify things more complex. Okay, so it's sort of an easy hack for documentation to update these uh, books on LibreOffice. Uh, it's, it's really very easy. Um, it's so easy that I just wanted to do myself, but I think it's not fair. I mean, the community should participate as well, so, okay? <laughs> okay, any questions on, on books before we, okay? Uh, still about the, the page uh, card. Yes. Uh, if, if, well, if, if you have the, your, the columns and the fields names uh, in German, it may be interesting to have an English, uh, because it helps us. Uh, 
in my case, uh, I will translate it from English to Dutch. Okay. Uh, do you suggest to also to translate to the papers? In yes. In that case, I think it will be interesting to translate the database. The queries. Yes. Well, yeah, you have a point. You have a point. It may, if if, if it goes to, uh, I mean, you translate it from English to Dutch. Yeah, if if the Dutch reader uh, is is comfortable with an English name, okay. Uh, I can tell you, a Brazilian will not like to have a German name. It, it it's impossible for him to understand. Okay, so in that case, perhaps we have to consider if uh, keeping the original uh, example makes sense or not. Okay, for the variables. Well, okay, so any other question on the books? No? Yes, please. Uh, excuse me? Macros. Yeah, for the macro. Yeah, for the macros, uh, I think, and maybe it's not the opinion of, of all of you, of you, but there is a book by an, an American author named Andrew Pitoniak. Uh, this is the best reference I have on macros. The, his book was published a couple of, uh, I mean, 10 years ago, has been a bit updated. And his book is continuously being uh, updated by himself. And it's extremely complete book. And it's available for download. I'm sorry, there is. It's available for download either in um, PDF and in ODT. So you can pick his book, ask him the permission for translation, and you can translate his book. <coughs> Combine. The book of by Andrew Pitoniak is um, the title is. Perhaps, but the, the application and the application program interface and the objects. Okay. Yeah, I should have put perhaps his book uh, as a reference for macros because uh, it definitely is the best book I, I saw so far. It really helps for the one that has to migrate a macro in Excel to, to LibreOffice. Uh, it explains the API. It, uh, it's, it's really a very, very well uh, documented book, and he's very knowledgeable. Okay. All right. Let's switch to the help content. Can we go? Okay. So the help content is a totally different issue that we have in documentation because uh, the help contents um, is, is in, embedded into the application. It is co closely coupled uh, with the um, application. So when you hit F1 or when you press your help button, then you will open the help contents. If the help is, uh, content is installed in your machine, it will open locally, otherwise uh, Candy uh, will, uh, has made um, uh, a way to, that, uh, to link uh, the websites on the, of the help 
to, your, uh, to the application. Well, what is the issues of the help application today? First of all, it's a 2006 technology uh, and no one has touched it since then. So it's 10 years, okay? Uh, what, when you press F1 and you see the help, you will see, uh, actually you see writer slash web displaying an HTML page. So the help content was designed to be a, a uh, uh, XML style sheet transformation to take XHP files and display HTML. And since 2006, nobody touched this technology. Why did they, we don't touch? First of all, because uh, for historical reasons, developers don't like too much to write help pages, okay? The second one is that um, it's, it is closely tied to translation process that we use. So the legacy that we have are the help files in XML. We call that H XHP. And uh, this, we cannot touch too much on these files without disturbing all the translation process. Okay? Okay. So it uses writer web to display as display engine. Okay? It's uh, HHP files. And then when you see the help, you see one page that is. Uh, the web page with the contents that you read, and on the on the left you see an, an index that is built on by uh, the compiler of Libre or when you build the, the application. So the the XML files are sourced for not only this display the content but also an index, and this turns to be a little bit complicated if you want to touch it. Okay, well, what are the tools that we have for inserting help content? Uh, what, can, what, what can we do for you to help you to write a help page? I have three procedures, okay? One is uh, if you don't want to go into the details of XML, you can just write a page for me you send to me and I transform it into a help page. I just want to show you basically what is uh, the, the content that you sh that should write. Uh, <coughs> you, you, for example, in a, in a blank page in Writer, please, uh, if you want to speak about the feature, for example, this Impress Remote. So the title is the Impress Remote. Okay, setting up impress remote. And then you have a short description. This feature does this and that, this and that. Okay, short description, one sentence or two. Okay, and then you have uh, a section where you say to access this function, how do I enable this function? And then you describe, or oh, you activate in the menu, you click that button, or you, act, you activate that, that icon, okay? So you describe what is function, how to, to do this function. And then you give us a little bit more details on the function. The impress remote allows you to control your presentation with your cell phone in Android or iOS and blah, 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 blah. You make a short description, maybe one or two paragraph, okay? Well, and then if you need parameters, then you start describing how uh, to set up the parameters and why, uh, where they are used and why they are used, okay? So you have parameters, parameters, and such and such, okay? Then examples, okay? How to, if you have examples, not for this case here, but uh, if you have uh, a function on calc, you may want to throw some numbers and get some results, okay? Then, tips and warning, what to do, what not to do, uh, what is the best way to achieve some, some uh, results, 
Okay? And the last, the, the last topic is a section where you see related topics. For example, if you were um, describing a mathematical function, you may want to refer to Wikipedia. Okay? So you, do, you give a short description for the, the user, but if the user wants more information, go to Wikipedia or go to some other source of information. Right? Is that difficult? No? Okay, so basically, if you are able to write one page or one page and a half about that, then you can send it to me because I will take the contents and transform into a help file, um, a help file for LibreOffice, right? Okay, this is the easy part. If you want to go further and be a more, more hacky, uh, then you can use the help authoring extension. Have you heard about this extension? Yeah? Okay. This extension was designed 10 years ago by the guy that uh, made the original help content. It's a set of macros bundled into an extension that gives you a set of new commands in your writer applica uh, application and then you can generate the um, help page almost automatically. I, see, I say almost automatically because this extension still has some uh, uh, glitches that prevents a full utilization of the extension. You will end up needing to look at the XML at the end. Okay, but it's important, it's good for um, bulk insertion of, of text and some formatting, okay? Some formatting. Well, how do I use this um, extension? We can get it from the DevTools LibreOffice.org, which is a repository of tools for developers, okay? You just install the extension on a stable release of LibreOffice, your, possibly your, your personal copy. Okay, then you c create and edit an existing help file. Okay, and then you s when you are done, you save and submit to Garrett. All these things on uh, editing a f a file and submit for Garrett is something that requires skills on building LibreOffice. This may not be the case for everybody, okay? Because even with the, all the progress we did, it's not so easy to, to make it, okay? Well, what is the advantage of this extension? Is that you use a known tool, which is Writer, for edition. Uh, it's good for bulk insertions, I mean, for creation of, of uh, the text, uh, your content, okay? So if you have several paragraphs to put in your text, this is a good way to, to do it because you're, you're using writer. So if you want to copy and paste, it will be easy with this extension, okay? And uh, it's, uh, you have to use some styles. I can show to you uh, later on, I won't have time for that in this work workshop, but if you want, I can show you how you use this extension for building the XML file, okay? So, uh, the point is, uh, it's good for some things, but it doesn't give you a complete file. You have to look at the XML at the end, okay? Well, the issues that I have, uh, for example, in some files, you cannot use copy, cut, and paste. Uh, there is a reason for that, is that each paragraph in a help file has a unique identifier. This unique identifier is important because when we come to translation, 
it will be the unique identifier of the string in the help contents. So if you change the, the ID of the paragraph, the translator will see there is a new string coming. And he will, he will discover that this new string is currently existing and was changed. So there is a rework to do. Okay. So uh, if you copy two paragraphs, you co uh, copy one paragraph and, and paste in the same file, you will have two paragraphs with the same ID, and this is going to break the build. Okay. So, and it's not going to detect it for you. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, like I said already, uh, when you, s uh, you are done with your file, you may need to edit the XHP file to, uh, before submitting. Okay, to fix, for example, the mistake that you did by copying and pasting a paragraph. Okay. Uh, this is one, one example. I have others that are more cryptic. Questions, questions. No, no questions. Too complicated? No? Very well. Then, the third possibility uh, is uh, an experimental possibility. Uh, thanks to uh, Christian and the infra team, uh, we have a virtual machine that is uh, uh, this one, vm173documentation.org, and it has all the pages uh, that we have in the help. Okay? <coughs> it's a website that displays the help page live, uh, I did it by tweaking the transformation uh, to make it available for a browser, not only for writer web, but for a browser. It uh, used to support uh, a, a, a Christian make a link between um, Portal and this site to help translators. Okay? And it contains a simple editor for HTTP files. Okay? And uh, the main drawback is that there is no checking on the, on the XML uh, schema. Okay, I will show you, if you allow me, I will show you this, uh, how it looks. Okay, I have the page here. So this is basically what we have, an entry page. And if I click here, I am displaying at the moment the help page that we have when we uh, start looking at the calc. Okay, and then you can click on any link and you will have the help page displayed in your browser. Okay, this is a direct, this is direct uh, XML file with the transformation. Uh, what it does is the, the Firefox downloads the, the XML files and also downloads the filter. And inside Firefox, inside the browser, it makes a transformation and does display this one, okay? Um, on, the, on the left, there is a tentative, an experiment to get all the bookmarks. Uh, it works more or less, needs more to work to be done on that. Okay, I had no time so far. And also, if you notice, then uh, um, on the top right, you will see uh, what is the file that is displayed, okay? And uh, the language and what the function, okay? So information that helps people to see what is the content of the page in the help they are touching, okay? Um, any questions? Yes? Yes, for every page, I had to declare the style sheet to use. And when Firefox downloads the, the XML files, it sees the style sheets, and then he ca it catches the style sheets to make the filter inside the browser. 
and then generates H X HTML here. Okay, so with this technology, uh, it should be possible to enhance the content of the help file with other features such as multimedia, graphics, and other things that could be uh, transform the help page into something more comfortable to read, right? Um, also, um, the link, all the links are working. Yeah? Uh, and uh, I also put into this uh, uh, virtual machine a small editor, a small PHP editor. I will show you uh, how it works. It's very simple. If you want to do some quick testing on the rendering of your page, you can go and edit the, the XML file directly and refresh the page, and it will show you what you did on, on your modification. For example, let me show you this uh, small editor. Okay. I have username and my password. Wrong password. So basically what you have is this is the help structure, okay, with you recognize as calc uh, 0001. These are the, uh, the folders where you have the XHP file. And then on the middle here, you have one of the file open, and it contains the XML that is the, the help file. Okay? You can do editing right there. It's, it's a simple text editing. It doesn't check anything. Okay, so if you made a mistake in the help, then you will, you will run into two problems. Okay, so it's just for small uh, adjustments or quick checking about an implementation you want to do. Okay, uh, it here, it, uh, ideally, um, it could be a rich text editor, tweak it to XML and uh, it goes directly to the repository of the software, ideally, but I don't know yet to how to do it, okay? But if you want to, to see specifically uh, one of the files, this one is uh, 0502030301.xhp uh, in your help uh, repository, then you can have a quick display of it, right? Very well. Questions about that? You may want to... No? So it's another experiment. Uh, I, I call that an experiment because it's not yet finished and uh, maybe uh, in uh, one of the meetings that we have in terms of um, engineering, uh, our decision will be taken someday if we go this way or that way about the help. Yes? Questions? No? Well, let me just log out. In Portal, let me give you an example. I will open Portal here. If I take one of the files in Portal, I want to translate it, for example. Here is a, a given a help page, and uh, on, the, on the left, you see here this link that will send you to the help page in VM173. So if you are, you are caught into translating uh, that data table, 
in this file and you want to see what data table is talking about, then the page will be displayed if you click on this link. Okay? So here is the page. Wait, well. Here is the page where a data table was was to be translated. Okay? Who is translator here? One, well, okay, many. T <laughs> I, I think that you understand the value of uh, being uh, uh, um, being able to access the context well on the text that you are translating. Okay, I am a translator too, so <laughs> I know what I talk about. <laughs> Very well. Very well. So, any question on this uh, small uh, addition that we do, that we did for for you? No questions. Well, the other media, the other media are all the the media that we made available for you, uh, for the community, uh, and it's involved the service that we have, such as uh, the wiki. Okay the wiki, the ask bot, the forums that we run, the mailing list, okay, and uh, possibly also uh, we are considering poss the possibility of having a YouTube channel, I think it's already there, for uh, maybe more dynamic uh, video videos and, and help assistance for the user. One thing I would like just to uh, remind you, uh, I, made a, I made a comment in the um, uh, translation list. We will have in 5.3 a new entry in the help menu. Uh, this new entry is get help online, right? And when you click on get help online, it will send you to a page of your community, for help of your community. For example, in the case of the Brazilians, it will go to the Portuguese AskBot instance. AskBot is a question and answer uh, site, and uh, if the user wants to uh, make questions for the community, this link will bring him directly to AskBot. Instead of Googling, it goes directly. Okay, so what will I need? to complete this feature and set the infra team with the right links is that you tell us what page you want to open with this link. Okay, um, I think that the French wants to open a specific forum that is not under TDF control. Uh, the Brazilians and Portuguese are okay with TDF, the, Ger the Germans too. Uh, maybe, perhaps you want to tell us Search on ask bot is quite easy, no? Yeah, you have full text search, but we have now no structure. Yeah. Okay. And you can you cannot do follow up or something like this. So I we had last the last book conference we had in Germany about three weeks ago. Uh, there has been a discussion about this topic and so I I don't think we we will have we will have our structure. But but if you want to, if you want another link, just tell us uh, that. Uh, or if you want to have a page that redirects you to several other links, it's also possible. It's just just to shorten 
the access of the service, uh, the information service and the software. And not to go to Google and make questions, take, take several pages of uh, gibberish to find something that you really want, okay? So, you, you tell us if we, you want, and if you want to improve AskBot, maybe, then we may, uh, within TDF, we have a contract with the uh, developer of AskBot. He's pr providing us upgrades and bug fixes. So if there is some feature, maybe uh, it may be interesting to see if we can implement it. The idea of AskBot is similar of Stack Overflow. Okay, yeah. Stack Overflow is a very successful um, a question and answer system. Okay, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, any other questions? Any other discussion? What can we do? Please give us some feedback. Yeah. So, since you have up, uh, you have notes that the user interface has changed and is changing quite frequently. So the menu entries are changing position, and we have to update the help files, explaining what are the new ways to access the same function. I saw really a lot of patches in entering. Yeah. yeah. I have a list, I will show you, I have a list of the missing features, uh, the help page that we have. Let me just show it to you right now. Um, let me open here. It is, I have a meta, what we call a meta bug, which is a bug that has all other bugs in dependence and it lists all the features that are missing. Let me just increase here so that we can, okay. For example, um, write help page for calc stream. There is a function in calc, name it calc stream and nothing is explaining this function, okay? Uh, I recently, I, imp I wrote the, what, what, the 8652, write help page for CMIS file access. I just did it a couple of weeks ago, which is uh, the way that you open files in remote servers, such as Alfresco, SharePoint, and such, okay? so. Many of the um, of uh, the, the help patch that that are missing. So please be my guest to pick one of this one on, on one of these bugs, write about it, and send it to us. It will go to the help. Okay. Right. It's now five uh, four o'clock. I don't want to uh, that we missed uh, the photograph, uh, the picture that will. We do outside, right? So, thank you for your attention, and do not hesitate to enter in contact with me, either through the lists, the documentation list, the translation list, or the, 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 the IRC, okay? So that we can really improve your, our um, software. Yes? 
Uh, yes, uh, we try to run we try to run a periodic uh, hangout to discuss documentation issue. Uh, I used to call in advance for one week in advance. We try to set a weekly meeting, but the old attendance was very slow, so we de decided to put every every two weeks. Uh, I will restart this procedure, to, uh, and I would really like you to join us in this uh, hangout, and so that we can uh, set maybe a process of producing documentation, and that one uh, individual can help the other, and 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 we all move ahead together. Okay. Thank you for reminding me, Rio. This is important for us. Okay.